dit non. How did he know? Okay. So we kept quiet. We didn't say anything since he did not ask us. So after he had gone, we asked Mama of the house. Say, Mama, where is that man's house? Say, ah, this who this person is. Yes, we want to visit him. Believe me, we sent him out of town. He went there. He said, you, you came to the house where we were. You did not meet us. So we wanted to also visit you. <laughs> yes. So we wanted to also visit you. Yeah, return much, Abby. Yes. Say, ah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No. And I was annoyed at the point. I said, I want you to know this. You've been fooling people here, doing this, doing that. Today, your work in this town has finished. You'll not succeed again. Everyone under your spell is loose. I said, I'll finish preaching on Sunday, and after that, I'll be back on my way. If you think you are somebody, meet me on the way. Point blank, open challenge. So if you think you are somebody, meet me on the way. I'll finish preaching on Sunday, and I'll be on my way back that Sunday. Believe me, the man did not last one week. He packed and left the village. The village has told me the story. Mama said, my son, this is, this is, I said, Mama, this is not a matter of you. The man got the whole of that town under a spell. You, you will not know. You see, when we are talking about hierarchies and some things people do, there is a governing power in the realm of the spirit that is championing that thing that you are seeing manifesting on the physical. Just in the same way, the Holy Spirit inspires you and you do something righteous. That one inspires them and they do something evil. Are we together? Just as there is the positive side, there is a negative dimension to it. And you must just take a stance and say, no, why did God send me to these people? And all of a sudden, why did I wake up to have that experience? There must be a purpose. Are we together? You have to read the meanings all through. Why did I wake up? Why the struggle? Why did I hear that faint voice of incantation as if the thing was going round and round and then coming closer? Why? Why should I wait for my friend to wake up and begin to pray and notice the struggle and, I'm saying, and me saying to him, just listen, just listen, just listen. Why was, was I picking the waves discerning the spirits operating in the atmosphere of that town. Why did I have the confidence? Say, hey, you did this, but this is your end. Went to the building. Say, no, say, no what? It's okay, it's okay, you can go. I said, no. You came to our house. You, we were not there. We were told that you came to the house. Now we have come to visit you. You did not even give us seats. To, you are rude. It's not culturally done like that. We came to us, you don't give us place to sit. You don't give us water to drink. Now we have entered your compound. This activity done on this earth, I curse it. My, my, my feet has come here. God sent me here to do what I need to do and I'll go. But what you are doing has come to an end. Friends, that's not the first time I've confronted this kind of a thing. Believe me. It's not the first time. There was one that time I was youth president. He saw one of our youth going back home and... Uh, he called him and uh, told him some story and story. He said, go and tell your leader he should come. He said, we are Christians. He said, uh, Christians come here also. Some of you betray the authority of Christ. So the boy was weeping. He said, this, 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 this. I said, keep quiet. Let's go and see the person. He said, remove your, your shoes. Said, Is that all? Said, we removed our shoes. We entered. Should we sit down? Okay, sit down. We sat down. And the man finished talking. I said, you know what? You are speaking just like your father. Lies, lies, and lies. And that is why I've come to close shop. Your operation in this part of the town cannot operate anymore. You are a liar. When I started praying, he said, no, you don't pray here. I said, yeah, you have done your own, I must do my own. It's turn by turn. Yeah. We did it. And, oh my goodness. But that was the attack that came in. I saw... <laughs> Cobras everywhere surrounding my bed in the night. Everyone to strike, but they couldn't. The snakes couldn't. The snakes and the scorpions. I chose this passage deliberately. It reminded me of an experience. I went together. The snakes and the scorpions came. They couldn't. They surrounded the bed. Each one ready to strike. I just turned and hissed. 
I know where they came from. But the man had to leave town. He was a liar. Satan lies. That's not how power is wielded. Whether they use the fake name of Jesus or so, when a believer wields that name, knowing on his own authority, because the authority is conferred from the inside, not from this one. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. From the inside, from the born again spirit, he says, in the name of Jesus, halt! Everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth, halts. Are we together? Just as some of you are taking the name of the Lord in vain. Small thing, Jesus. You hit your foot again, Jesus. What did Jesus do you? And it is written, the Lord will not hold guiltless those who take his name in vain. The day you want that name to be exercised as authority, it becomes a joke. Because you never saw it or recognized the authority that it carried. Leave him alone, I beg. Let Jesus be Jesus in the realm of authority that you need him to be. Are we together? So that you don't keep joking with a holy thing. Don't get yourself involved with profanity. When you take a holy thing and use it carelessly, it's profane. It's abuse. God will not hold guiltless those who use his name in vain. So watch yourself, watch your mouth, watch your habits. To the heavenly, it's not polite. If you like, say, Jesus, we know what you want to say. <laughs> one brother was telling me what happened to him one day. As he was driving, somebody did some mad overtaking. And he felt he needed to drive closer to him and give him the peace of his heart. He wanted to do waka. Then he went and saw that his church member said, praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't abuse him anymore. All right? Number four is the conferring of, of authority. You know, understand the nature of the believer's authority. Understand how it is conferred. And remember this gospel song a choir usually sings? Take the phrase, Calvary settles it all. You see, Jesus did not come to earth for himself. He had no reason to come. Are we together? But for us. As a result, verse 19a of Ephesians chapter 1, remember last week, Ephesians 1, 19a tells us, God's great power is for us. Everything about the power of God is channeled towards us. Are you getting that? It is channeled towards you, towards me, towards all of us that are members of his body. Praise the Lord. So, embedded in that crisis of the resurrection of Jesus is the identification that we have in him. We are identified with him and in him. Praise the Lord. See the flow of it. The great exchange happened. Jesus gave us his righteousness and took away our sins. Are we together? He knew no sin. Jesus gave us his riches and took away our poverty. Remember it is written? Remember the grace of our Lord Jesus that even though he was rich, yet he, become, he became what? Poor. So that through his poverty we might become rich. Now it is not only spiritual. If you are really spiritually rich, you should translate also outwardly. Praise the Lord. All right. There is nothing as a, a, a poor church rat. Our seats are not poor. This seat we are sitting is not a poor seat. Look at, look at it. Does it look like a poor seat? Uh, even the pews are expensive to buy. As hard as they are. Okay. If you want to dispute it, ask the Kinokereke. He belongs to the wood industry. He will tell you <laughs> how this wood is very expensive. Okay? There's nothing called a poor church rat. No, 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 no. no. There is no church rat that is poor. Church rats are, are rich. No, don't say stingy. I was stinkingly. How can something that is rich be stinking? Have you seen a stinking rich man? They smell good. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. They smell good. <laughs> Praise God. Uh -huh. Don't say it was stinkingly. Uh -uh. 
what, what is thinking is not good. All right? Jesus extend, uh, exchanged his well-being, health, healing, robust health, for our sicknesses, diseases, infirmities. Praise the Lord. And Jesus exchanged his glory, glorification now, for our degradation. By the fall, we were brought to zero. And Jesus came and did this great exchange. He took our place and he made us to get to his position. Praise the Lord. Because when we function from his position, we are going to fulfill the plan of God for us here on earth. Whatever you may describe as purpose, whatever you may see as your mission statement in life, can only be sufficiently or adequately achieved under the authority of Jesus. Apart from that, believe me, you have been sabotaged before day one of your life. Are we together? You have been what? Sabotaged before day one of your life. But with all the familiar spirits of your families, all of them, they know the potential of that family. They know the stars assigned there and they are there to just derail and finish you off. Well, you see, long time ago, David could notice this and prophesy in the psalm. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. And he said, who delivers your soul from the pit? Who feeds your mouth with sweet things that your youth is renewed like the eagles? He saw what God will do in Christ. So David, hear me well, David moved beyond time to live his life in time. Are you hearing that? David moved to how? Beyond time. And lived his life here within time. That revelation was not for the time of David. That revelation was for our time. Are we together? And yet David saw it and lived it out. Who has experienced more pits in life than David? Are we together? He said, God forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. He delivers our lives from the pits. Uh, David knew pits, friends. He knows what it means for someone to chase a person like a rat. Sometimes in the same cave with his arch enemy. He knows what it means. He was appointed the palace musician. Anytime he's doing that ministration, the demon inside his employer will come down. And the same employer would want to lynch him with a spear. He knows what it means to dodge the edge of the sword and the arrow by whiskers. Are we together? He knew what it means. If somebody will have the dream about, I saw death coming, David had it. And yet he lived full time. Are we together? He lived full time. You live full time, friends. Amen. David lived what was not given in his own generation, in his own generation, because he perceived that revelation. And he will say, my soul will not forget the benefits. That benefit is only found in redemption. And yet David lived it out. What about you, friend? We are talking about what God did for us in redemption. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 2. We focus from verse 4 to 6. I want you to see the three operative verbs there. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. In a little while, I'll release you to pray. And you need to pray like mad. Amen. Because you need to take authority. Observe our identification with Christ in those three operative ver no, verbs there. Look at the simultaneous actions that God take. God made us alive with Christ. What does that word mean? That compound verb that is associative in nature with that word with. Made alive with Christ. In other words, without us, Christ was not made alive. And without Christ, we were not made alive. Can you see the implication? It is simultaneous action. As it was physically happening to Christ, spiritually it was happening to us. We were made alive with Christ. What happened when he died our death, we also died with him. Remember from chapter 2 verse 1, we all died in our sins and the trespasses 
that we have committed. We are dead before God. Mankind has fallen. We are off grace. Are we together? So we died. And what did God do? Just imagine a dead body died there. And then God made alive. Are we together? Now to be made alive is not biological life there because the word there is zoe. He brought back the life of God. And that's why it is only our spirits that were made alive. Now, made alive but still lying. What will you do with that which is made alive and still lying? Look at the next verb. He raised us up with him. He made us alive with whom? With Christ. Amen. He raised us up with whom? With Christ. Two very powerful images. We'll get to the third one now. So you were down. He brought life. And then not only were you alive, but lying down, low level, level zero, he raised you up because you can never be down again. I say you can never be down again. Amen. Amen. So he raised you up with Christ. So you are standing, you are moving, you are going about things, but then there is the best of it all. He seated us up with him. You are exalted, you are glorified, just as Christ is exalted. Praise the Lord. And that is the darling of it all. If you were made alive and raised up without being seated, your authority can still be contested. Are we together? But when he seated Christ at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above rules and powers, what happens here is that you became a co-seater. It is not that, you see the way our chairs are arranged here, okay? Because usually on a Sunday, I, I sit somewhere here according to what they say. You understand? Somehow, without anybody saying, they, they unconsciously push me to sit in the middle. You, you get it? No, I try to describe something for you. As I sit here in the middle, this one this way, this one this way. If you are going to describe, you say, if he is far to the right-hand side of the pastor, Abby, Sonny is far to the left-hand side of the pastor. Now, this is not the issue concerning this being seated with Christ. It is not that God arranged chairs on his throne. No. There's only one seat. Are you getting it? There's only one seat. There's only one chair. So there's only one person that occupies that chair. Who is the one person that occupies that chair? Jesus, our head. But we are his body. So Christ is the only one seated in that chair. In him, we are all seated. Because in Christ, all things consist and have their being. Yeah. Are you seeing it? Okay. We are seated in Christ. In that one seat. We are sharers. No one is far from the right or far from the left. We are in that seat of authority by the Father's right hand. You know what? You need to ask yourself, what took you downstairs that Satan demolished you? When that seat is described to me. We are far above. You know the way we greet each other? About how, how far? Say, far above. Tell the person, I'm far above principalities. I'm far above powers. I'm far above rulers. I'm far above dominions. I'm far above titles. And I love the way Paul, by the Spirit, crafted this word of being far above. He said, Jesus is exalted far above Every title, any name of title that you can give in this age and in the age to come, God anticipated and exhausted them all. God thought ahead of time. Okay, Satan is crafty. He can create according to his own order. Now, before he creates, I've created and surpassed him. Whatever title, no matter the name of the demon that may emerge, no matter the area of the principality that may be assigned to that power, God has moved ahead of it. You are covered in life, friends. You are covered in life. So, the conferring of authority is when God made us alive, raised us up, and seated us with him. We are in that seat. Nothing can shift you out of that seat. Amen. Nothing can take that seat out of you. You know those days we used to play, play pranks when our friend wants to sit down and he doesn't see, we pull the seat away. Is that so? Okay? Nothing, no one can do that prank with you there. You are there. So you need to ask yourself sometimes, how comes instead of you living higher life, you are living lower life? God has positioned you 
upstairs. Why are you living downstairs, man? How? Why is it that every day in your life you are talking principalities, powers, this demon, this spirit, this? Why can't you talk about angels, heaven, the things, the next move of God in your life, and the things that surround you? Friends, what are we discussing with each other? If anyone is risen in Christ, he should fix his eyes on things above. Where Christ is seated. Is that in your Bible? Yes. What does God ask us to fix our eyes on? Things above. Where Christ is seated. Lord, may I have fellowship with the angels today. Lord, may I rejoice in the midst of the spirits of men made holy. Can I have some revelation knowledge concerning this issue? Now I'm getting stranger, but it's not so. You need to believe this teaching. Because what you will become the next three, five, ten years and above lies on this truth I'm delivering to you. I'm serious about it. You need to know it. Authority is not emotion. It's not feeling. Oh, you wake up, you feel you are a Christian. You feel filled with the Holy Spirit. No, it's not so. No. Authority is nature. Are you hearing me? It's nature. That's who you are as a believer. You have it. It is in there. You don't have to feel it, but it is the truth. You just have to acknowledge that this is who I am. Let me just be it. Okay? Now, the older ones among us will remember some of the things that our fathers used to always say to us. Say, when you go there, remember whose son thou art. Is that true? And one day I said, <laughs> Papa only knew you as a pastor. What, what, what again? <laughs> he tell me, eh, remember whose son you are. You're a pastor. So what else? Well, what I'm trying to say is that don't betray that name you carry. It's not in vain you carry that name. But I hope there's nobody here that is ashamed of his or, his or their parents. You don't have to. You don't have the right to be ashamed of them. Are we together? No matter how terrible they have acted, you don't have the right to judge them. The one who made them to be your parents will judge them, but not you. If you love your life, be at peace with them and bless them. Their judgment is in the hands of the Heavenly Father, not you. You are a son, you are a daughter. And the path of peace for you is honor your parents so that your days may be long the land which the Lord your God has given to you. This is the first commandment with a promise. Amen. Amen. Don't judge your parents. Thank God for who they are. They live according to the light they had. Praise God. All right. When God brings us closer to them, do whatever will bless them and help them to understand something. Some things they can never and will never understand. So don't, don't disturb yourself. Don't think that they hate God. They don't hate, they don't hate God. They are living their own way. And allow God to judge. Are we together? Uh-huh. So... Don't allow yourself to say, ah, Pastor, you don't know. You are telling me to love my father. Uh, 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 pastor, he, he's a wizard. Then you are, you, are, you, are, you are a wizard also. Have you ever seen a snake given back to goat? Uh -uh. A witch will give back to a witch. So I don't know what you will come, call a small witch, whether a witchess or a witchlet. <laughs> I mean, just enjoy the fun of it. Abby, a, a witchlet. <laughs> We are doing English here. I say, enjoy your parents. Bless them. May God open your eyes to see if anything is wrong with the spirit you know, in the lineage so that you arrest it. It stops where it gets to. Are we together? And then set them free because they also wish they are free. They don't know the influences around their life. But you who is up there, you easily see what is downstairs. Are we together? If you are upstairs, you see far and you see what is also down. But the person that is down is already down. So don't just judge. God will help us. Praise the Lord. So you see, what we have been saying is this. The head cannot be raised up and seated without the body. Who is the head of the church? Christ. And who are we? Members. Okay. Now, be a little bit imaginative, please. 
Assume that you woke up this morning and your head came to church and your body is lying at home. <laughs> eh? I mean, just imagine that Pastor Bagudu is, is, is speaking to heads and nobody's, <laughs> the heads are, on each chair is a head. Uh, you see Sars here. <laughs> when the head of the church was raised up, his entire body was also raised up along with him. We are complete in Christ, who is the head of our principalities and powers. You are complete in Christ. Just as they cannot rule over Christ, they cannot rule over you. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you, a member of that same body. Praise the Lord. So you see, your life is now a mystery. The location from which you have to exercise authority is not the earth. Because you are no more an earthling. Are we together? By the law of your spiritual birth, you are born of above. Are we together? Since you are born from above, you rule from the throne to the earth. You belong to the kingdom of this world by nature of flesh. But by nature of your spirit that is born again, you belong to the kingdom of heaven. Are we together? But then, for this earth to produce for you as it should, you must make the authority of heaven to come down here so that it will be here on earth as it is done where? In heaven. Is that not how Jesus said we should pray? Your will be done where? As it is done where? How will you know what is there in heaven? It's because you belong there and when you read the scripture, he brings the revelation to your spirit man. Are we together? Why? It is given unto you to understand the things of the kingdom of God, but to those who are out there, they only do CRK. You understand me now? They only do CRK. They can be called professors, but they know nothing. They can't shift a pin. But you, your English may not be correct. It doesn't matter. You understand? If you like, Satan came here. He will come. Because he knows what the spirit is saying. Are we together? Spirit language is not grammar. No. We are talking about authority. It's not grammar. You answer that? Ah. Instead of come, say, came, he will come. Why? In the realm at which you utter it, it is correct. Let your English teachers call you bad. In the realm of the spirit, you are 100% excellent. Why? Because that is authority. I grew up with dogs. I liked them. I wonder why I don't have dogs. It's because that's part of the things I have to give away. In, in, in order to enjoy the people that are around me now. <laughs> but, I, but sometimes I even dream dogs, believe me. I see myself sometimes dreaming and playing with dogs around me because I liked them. But I noticed some things about dogs. When you are playing with a dog, you are playing, you are playing, and time comes, you want the dog to go away. It won't go away. It wants to continue to play until its own attention. So it wants to dictate when it leaves you. But you know what? Immediately, you change the tone of your voice or your countenance, and you say, Viper, that's the name of one of my dogs. Viper, go. It will, mm, and go. It recognizes that you have changed the atmosphere around you. The mood has changed and it must change its behavior. In the same way, the person with authority speaks with intensity from the inside. Satan cannot be joking around you and say, uh, Pastor, I just don't know what we will do with this. You don't know. Stay there. He's eating you. You don't know. By the time we bury you, you will know. You need to be serious. So you don't joke with spiritual things. Okay? You don't joke with spiritual things. Nobody needs to tell you to fast and pray. I've told you fasting is not the way to power. The way to power is you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has what? Come upon you. That is it. Power is Holy Spirit. Fasting helps you to tame your body and makes you to listen to God. It subdues the flesh and makes you to listen to God. Are we together? Yes. Those who tell you that uh, fasting brings power to you, they want you to be possessed by evil spirits. A lot of damage has been done by wrong teachings. You want power? Holy Spirit, wait on him. Power will descend on you. Praise God. What does fasting you do? It conditions you. 
so that you become simple before God and your body is so disciplined that your spirit is strengthened to hear God. Are we together? That's the secret. So nobody needs to tell you time to time, fast. Take time with God. Address issues in your life. Don't pay any prayer warrior. You know we have prayer contractors in town. Oh, you're laughing. There are prayer contractors. They tell you, bring one carton of Indomie. Another carton of <laughs> Bovita. And we'll pray for you. we we'll fast. You want to pray for me and you want to chop one carton of Indomie. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> Amen. So, you don't need anyone to, 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 to tell you lies. No. Enough of the nonsense in your life. Tell yourself, I will take the time to wait on God. Remember how I've tried to teach you about fasting. Fasting is not that you must go with, with, without water or whatever. If it means missing a meal. Take that time to be in God's presence. That's what matters. Focus your attention. Don't allow anything to take your thoughts here and there. Some say they are praying, but their minds have traveled to Kaduna. They are here. We are seeing them, but they are somewhere. That is not fasting and that is not praying. Focus your attention on God and God alone and that which you desire from him and stay there until you hear God. That to me is fasting and praying. It's not a matter of uh, 70 days. Uh, uh, we know a lot of those hypocrisies. People champion laziness and call it uh, spiritual warfare. Who is spiritual warfare? Only Jesus did only 40 days. What do you want to conquer? Hello? What do you want to conquer? <laughs> oh, someone recently told me the story about somebody who said he wants to beat the record of Jesus in fasting. As we are speaking today, the man is buried. He has beaten the record. <laughs> so Jesus fasted 40 days and so he, too, he wants to beat the record. He wants to go 50. And the body cannot take it. So he has to leave this earth for us. And Jamaica will flog him, eh? <laughs> Because that is stupidity. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You don't enjoy yourself in the name of fasting and praying. Get into the scripture. There is no doctrine of fasting as you will find straight concerning salvation. Are we together? You can see salvation clearly. You can see the issues that govern the spiritual life clearly. But you see, fasting sometimes includes somebody doesn't have shirt. You have to, there are many, give one out. You have fasted yourself. Are we together? Give food to the hungry person. It's another form of fasting. Donate some things. Do some things. It is also part of fasting. Praise the Lord. So it is not that every day you are without water. If you do not have a sufficient water, they will tell you, get the medical people, they will tell you, these things you are secreting on the inside you, before you realize, they will begin to bust your bowels. Some ulcers are unnecessary. It is because we are so idiotic many times because we don't want to obey the law of the body. Your body has laws that govern its existence. Are we together? If you keep violating these laws, you pack up. You say, uh, Satan, I bind you. It is not binding Satan. You better bind yourself. Are we together? Bind yourself from that lack of thinking. Drink water and neutralize all of these secretions inside you and excrete them out so that you remain healthy on the inside. The longer you take in fasting without food, the longer it should take you to break the fasting. If you rush food, your intestines will burst. Are you hearing me? I'm talking to spiritual people. You don't rush food. So, oh, I've waited on God for these past days. I've not eaten well. Now, I will demonstrate my authority. <laughs> No, no, no. Ah, if you go longer, your intestine have become so soft. You understand? So you don't go hard food. You go so much with non-acidic vegetables. Not acidic vegetables so, or, or fruits and vegetables. Not acidic ones because they, 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 will, they will jump there and riot will happen. You, you have ulcer. So have common sense. I'm not against fasting. I do fast. Sometimes, you know what I do? No dinner. Why? That's my fasting. I move into the night to pray. Try it one day and see. Take your breakfast. Take your lunch. Forget about dinner and use the night to pray. 
and no food around you, only water, until either the next breakfast or the next lunch. Even your body will tell you that you have prayed. It looks as if it is simple, but the hour of the night is one of the most treacherous hours I've known. Have some of you experienced that? Even normally when you are not fasting, nobody wants the hunger of the night to visit. You don't hunger, visit you for night. <laughs> you go see all your people, they walk out for your room. <laughs> I want to encourage you, don't neglect this authority that you have in Christ. Because when you neglect it, you will suffer, and other people will suffer as a result of it. But when you use it, you set yourself free, and other people will also be set free. Praise the Lord. Use the authority and bring tremendous blessing to humanity and above all, glory to God. Shall we pray, friends? In that passage we read, Jesus said, I give you authority to trade upon serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have been protected from above and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has given you the authority. Will you use it? I don't know the issues that are there but First John 4, 4 tells us you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them, all the challenges. For greater is he that is in you that, than he that is in the world. Will you please Pray now. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. If you want to come to the altar, I will not ask you to come to the altar. It is left for you. Pray anyhow you want to pray. But I know you don't speak with authority quietly. You have to speak forth. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. If you, if you believe this teaching, pray from heaven to earth so that as you touch earth, what is done in heaven is what you are executing here on earth. Your will be done, Lord, on my earth, my family, my business, my children, my this, my that, over this situation here on earth, oh God. This is the picture I have in heaven. Let it happen. Let that picture be replicated here on earth. So snap what is in heaven and print it here on earth. Somebody pray. Pray with all kinds of prayers and supplications in your spirit. Remember you are praying for yourself. If the miracle doesn't come, you are to blame for it. You are the one stopping yourself from your miracle. No one else. But the word of faith which we proclaim has been sent to you. The word of his grace is in your heart right now. Take any posture. If you see that you are getting conscious of people around you, leave that place. You can come to the altar. If you want to stand, stand. You want to kneel down, kneel down. You have to come to the altar, come to the altar. You want to lie flat, come and pray. We have about 10 minutes to really concentrate on God. Concentrate on God, concentrate on the issue you want to, to focus on. And pray out your heart. You have authority given to you by birth. Some things can be stopped and should be stopped today. Don't postpone till tomorrow what you should take charge of today and even right now. Pray. Manda da 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 hida la bra hada ra ba 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 ra ka sha ka ta hida la ra ba 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 kambo sheke te te ya da da ba le ba 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 langa le bo shika ra da da ba 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 manda langa landa de bo ko shi da da ba kanda la ba ri ba 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 man ka shi ka ta bra du shike te te bra du ska te bra ka ta mata ka pa ta si ka ta 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 hida da de ba ba The adversary, the devil, is looking around like a lion, looking for whom to devour. Resist him firmly. Resist firmly, scripture says. Again, I advise you, 
If you are not comfortable where you are praying, either stand up or kneel down or move to the front. Take any posture you want. My father's house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. Open your mouth, pray, dislodge what you need to dislodge. Break bondages that you need to break. Be free in his presence. Be free to pray. Be free to express your authority in Christ Jesus. Be free to prophesy. Is anyone in trouble? Let him pray. Mandala, pray. Pashinga patashika pataka santa debraka mamba de de ziko toto poso koto to prokoto ti akaka mangali katata hidele proto roboni baba 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 raka zaku te te praka labunda mavundo so 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 koto ro hidere ande la praka de de ya mangala da dine so 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 koto hidere bali baba baba raka jike ke te sisi ko le praka de baba 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 manda ka babu la ka labura ka la ka labura ka la ka labura ka ka manka da 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 bara da da bara bali bali baba 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 para da 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 bara bali bali baba baba is anyone happy in the spirit? Then you sing to God. Sing in your spirit. Is anyone sick in his body? Call the elders. Let them pray for you with on of hands and anointing with oil. Pray, friends, pray. Pray for breakthroughs. Friends, some things happening around you are not just ordinary. Take authority now in the name of Jesus. Take authority now in the name of Jesus. Take authority now in the name of Jesus. Some things around you are not just ordinary. Some things about your profession, they are not just ordinary. Some things around you are not just ordinary. Please take authority. Bali kata shikata tamara kana kabuya mangele bo shakata hinele brende makapa da kala kaya kala kala brende pakata kala prahu deri bani mara baba 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 yenge pakopo dozuka katika la hinele brungo no bobo mama kasa ya ka reka bo jenge de mara baba baba makaze kasusa kata hinele preka deri baba 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 rango lele bo shikete hinele bani baba 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 mama jaka darindo robo di baba 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 ya praku ka praku da praku te preke preke te preke ne preke deri bani baba 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 Chase the enemies away from the gates and take authority. Take over dominion. Take over authority. Chase them away from your gates. Chase them away from your gates. Chase them away from your gates. And take authority. 
receive back your authority. Receive back your placement in Christ. Receive back that which God has conferred on you as your purpose in life. Take it back. Seize it back. The picture of heaven concerning you is that you have overcome. The picture of heaven concerning you is that you have overcome. Insist on that picture being implemented. Insist on that picture being implemented. You have overcome the world. The one with you. The one that gives you authority. The one that gives you the audacity to so believe. His name is Jesus. The Lord of life himself. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. He is the one that backs you up. Insist in your position. Insist. Tell the devil, you lying devil, I am not negotiable. This thing God has given to me, I know I'm not going to negotiate it with you. I take back my thing completely. Nothing missing, nothing remaining. I take back that which Jesus gives to me. I take it completely. I am not negotiating with you. Back off in the name of Jesus. Back off in the name of Jesus. Tell him to back off. Tell him to back off. Resist him firmly in the name of Jesus. My do 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 mama kaka su tinga mando ja konte te mara hulera babuske mande lele bo shakata la hidele bodia mala la baba da da kasu sakata yaka baba du jakata tabaya kata tabaya patata taka la bara da da na mara baba baya ka pataka pataka tapata yaka ta la brede mande lele bo shakata le brede de de mande de 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 bara baba 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 ra ka pata yo koto pe ya koto to sukata kasi ke le brede mando la ko ja kote ria la brahan de baba baba pataka tata hida la We are still praying. Get to your feet. Get to your feet. Because you, you were still praying and prophesying. But a song came into my mind. We are going to sing it. And see yourself in that realm. Because by the Spirit, things have happened. Amen. For Put some vigor in it, yeah. The horse and his riders. On to the Lord, for He has triumphed. I see your victory. I see it happening. I see the problem being deluged, flooded away. Sing on to the Lord. Bless His name. 
stands before him. God has moved and done it. Unto the Lord. For he has triumphed for us. The horse is and the riders have I see you victorious. I see you. You have win one. Just worship the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed for us. The horses and the riders have been drawn into the sea. Sing unto the Lord. Yes, he has triumphed for us. See it as a soul. It's done. Dance to that prophetic song, friend. It's done. Sing unto the Lord, for He has triumphed for us. The horse and the riders have been thrown into the sea. The horse is. Lift up your voices and begin to prophesy unto your life. Proclaim it. And my spirit is done. Believe me, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Amen. Prophesy. Proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Proclaim it. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone brought a word of assurance, a revelation. A thick darkness lifting and living, roll back away. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, thank you for your light. Thank you for taking the darkness away. Thank you. So bless him. Let's bless our God. It's done. It's done. Whatever that darkness may represent in your life, it's done. It's done. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so gracious. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Gracious Lord. Exalted Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 